Welcome back in our business lounge segment today. We have Richard Whitworth with us here from Satera Investment Management. And he's got some tips for small business owners. Richard, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so much, Michael. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, this is a big week for us. It's Small Business Week. And, um, you know, it's uh, from the 5th through the 11th. And uh, what's the current business environment for, uh, for Main Street financial advisors right now? It's a great question, Michael, and I think that the environment couldn't be better for the Main Street Financial Advisor. You know, we at Satera work with about 8,000 advisors who cut across all areas of the United States, and the what we're get, what we're hearing out of them is just positivity in terms of where they think they are in the business cycle for their own closely held small businesses, as well as I think the sentiment that they're getting out of their Main Street investors who themselves are really cutting across the fabric of the United States, be they teachers, firefighters, doctors, lawyers, or small business owners themselves as clients. You know, as uh, our guest is Richard Whitworth, and we should mention he's the managing director of the Satera Financial Group's business consulting organization, and he manages a team of consultants, uh, business consultants, and subject matter experts, and uh, this guy's got a background, Bachelor of Science in Finance from the University of Delaware, minors in Spanish, Economics, International Business. He's got an international MBA with honors from the IE Business School in Madrid, Spain. He also is a cum laude graduate of the, uh, the Petty School in, uh, in Heightstown, New Jersey, and uh, he's also on the advisory board of the San Diego Financial Literacy Center. So when we're talking about starting a business, it's kind of tough, kind of tough to get things going over there. So what are the primary things to consider for advisors that are starting Starting their own practices. Sure, and, and that's a great question. And thank you so much for uh, for the the glowing words in terms of the background. You know, I, my biggest passion is is helping small business owners make the right decisions about their business. You know, I, I don't think right. that the vast majority of small business owners, you know, they didn't go to Harvard or Stanford to get an MBA. They don't have a formal training in business management, and what they need is a plan. You know, the ability to think one, three, and five years into the future of where they want their business to be from a strategic vision, but then being able to overlay the tactics and objectives that are going to happen on a daily or a quarterly or a semi-annual basis that are going to get them to that growth trajectory and what that ultimate goal is. You have to reverse engineer where you want to be to where you are today. And from my standpoint, it's very much grounded in specific metrics for a firm. It doesn't matter if you're a franchise owner of a laundromat or a McDonald's, if you're in independent financial services and own a wealth management advisory shop. The idea is to manage to the bottom line. Pick out those two or three or four key metrics that you're going to hold yourself and your staff accountable to. Be that something like revenue per professional or the number of clients that a specific support staff person manages and, and has a relationship with. There are key indicators and easily calculatable indicators that all business owners should have at the ready anytime that they need because it allows you to course correct if you start to deviate from that growth trajectory that you're on. So well, what are the challenges that, uh, that surround someone owning and operating a family business and, and what are the challenges that are unique to financial services? So I think one of the, the biggest ones is, is the idea of continuity and succession planning. And it really, as you said, Michael, cuts across all industries. You know, these closely held businesses tend to be owned and operated by the G1, the first generation of the business. And right. let's, let's, be, let's be fair, right? The average business owner tends to be somewhere between 45 to 55 years of age. The average client of that small business owner tends to grow up with him or her. So you have an environment where your client base by and large is aging as the advisor or as the business owner is aging, and you have to think about the, the intergenerational transfer of the business. And that's predicated upon having both a short-term business continuity plan, so what's going to happen if there's a physical disruption in my business, a more medium-term continuity plan is how am I going to step out as the business owner and ensure that the business is managed and maintained in my absence, be that from disability or illness to I want to take that three-week European holiday with my spouse, and then ultimately, what's the formal exit planning process look like for me and my business? How That's am I going to ensure that I'm going to transfer my legacy to that G2 owner as well as monetize my business for myself? Because for the majority of small business owners, the monetization and the eventual sale of their business is the biggest financial windfall that they themselves are going to have through retirement. You're right. 
You're right. They got to think ahead for that. Where do we go to get more information? Is there a website? Yeah, are you available? How do we get all of you? Definitely. So I'm available on LinkedIn myself. You can go to Richard Whitworth. It's W H I T W O R T H, and you can find me there. You can also go to Cetera's website. That's www. Dot C-E-T-E-R-A dot com, and you can Cetera. learn about both about me as well as the six broker dealers that make up Satera Financial Group. So we can help the average investor find the best financial advisor for their needs and their goals. Richard, thanks so much for being with us. Everybody, go to Satera.com, C-E-T-E-R-A.com. Thanks a lot, Michael. Have a great day.